Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel All About BI. In this session, I'm going to take you through uh, this particular documentation page, Pipeline Runs Query by Factory. So why we need to uh, look at this? There will be scenarios in real time where you want to know about the execution status of pipeline, whether it is a manual trigger or um, a scheduled trigger or it, it can be anything, okay? But you are interested to know about the pipeline run status. So in order to do that, we can use a web activity and uh, the syntax that is mentioned in this particular page, right? Uh, using which we can get the necessary details or the metadata about every pipeline execution run. So uh, what you can do is you can use this REST API. You can pass either uh, the pipeline name or pipeline run ID and get the details of that particular uh, pipeline's detail okay so i'm going to explain the basics of it what and all we need to know about it and how we how do we go about it how can we know the pipeline execution status of more than one pipeline um, in your data factory okay that is what we are going to see so uh, this is this rest api is to query pipeline runs in the factory based on input filter conditions while you query this rest api right you can pass certain where condition or uh, filter conditions um, because in real time there will be lots and lots of lots of executions okay and you will not be interested to know about all the pipeline and all the runs uh, so basically you can restrict the output uh, uh, to a certain um, uh, values based on certain filter conditions for example from this time to that time or for this particular pipeline or for these particular pipelines um, like that you can pass uh, filter condition i'll be taking you through the list of allowed filters operands operator everything okay so it's it it all starts with this uh, http endpoint so it starts with the post so the the call is going to be a post call to the rest api and uh, we will be using this particular um, uh, rest api uh, or uh, this is the domain which is going to supply the necessary values management.azure.com next to that you will be providing the subscriptions keyword followed by the, the subscription id the resource group and the resource group name this resource group is nothing but uh, in which your data factory belongs to okay and then followed by that providers and then data factory microsoft or data factory followed by that factories and the data factory name itself so you will be replacing these placeholders with the actual values and then finally the endpoint would be query pipeline runs so to this we are passing this query string api version this is all mandatory till now you will be replacing the placeholders as per the given table so what is it factory name you have to replace your data factory name resource group name as i said and then subscription id it has to be your subscription id and then api version that we have already passed in the query string okay next to that we have to pass a request body so if you go to the data factory and uh, use a web activity right it will be asking you the url okay that is what we looked at right now and followed by that url you will be asked to, to provide a method whether it is a post call or get call for the rest api so in our case it's going to be a post call as mentioned in the beginning of this url okay and then followed by that you will be asked to provide body so this is where we have to mention the filters in hand i told you right if we want to restrict the output to certain values after a particular date and before a particular date and all we have to use this body section in this body section you have certain um, things to note okay so last updated after these are all going to be in json format key value pair after last updated uh, i mean these are these two parameters last updated after and last updated before these are required parameters required in the body if you do not mention this in the body of the web activity your web activity will fail uh, okay uh, or it will not fetch you any details basically these are required so it needs to know uh, at what time or between what time range you want the uh, results of the pipeline execution it cannot go fetch everything from the past uh, when you started running your data factory or when you started running your pipeline till this point okay it needs a time range so it is a required parameter which has to be given in iso 8601 format okay we can see an example from the same page um, to identify how to use it all right so these two are to be mentioned in the body followed by that continuation token if you are going to uh, access any rest api that supplies the values in pages then we have to use this 
for this example let us keep this part alone now and then filters and this is where we have to mention the pipeline name or the run id based on which the rest api will be giving us the required results okay order by this is a class which uh, lets the rest api sort the results before giving it to us okay so this is the request body i will show a sample request body to you right now before taking you through these two options okay coming down a little bit in the same page so this is the uh, url that has to be supplied in the url um, option in the web activity and then in the body you will be mentioning something like this okay last updated after last updated before everything in key value pair and then filters so if you look at the filters we need three things here one is operand second is operator third one is value okay operand is um, based on what operand you need the rest api to filter your records okay it can be pipeline name it can be run id uh, there are certain allowed values here i'll take you through that followed by that operator operator can be equals or not equals in or not in okay that also i'll be telling you where to uh, know about all these allowed parameter values all right and then values uh, if you are just mentioning one pipeline it will be a single value if you are going to mention more than one pipeline it's going to be an array of values separated by comma okay so this is the sample um, input or sample values that we that we have to give in the web activity all right going above a little uh, i'll be telling you what are the allowed filters what are the um, allowed values in the query filter operator operand everything okay so i'm just clicking this you will be seeing operand operator and values okay uh, what are the allowed operate operands okay i told you you can filter the uh, values by name or an id right there are certain other operands as well which you can use so if you click on that you will be getting to see all the allowed values there okay so you can filter the result based on activity name activity run in activity run start activity type latest only pipeline name run group id so most of uh, the time in real time we will be interested to know pipeline based on pipeline name or run id okay or even the trigger name so these are the allowed values for the operand field so what are the allowed values for the oper operator field come down a little bit so as i said equals not equals in and not in okay so having um, seen about all these allowed values on the syntax i'm taking you through the pipeline now okay apart from what we have uh, seen till now we need to know little bit more about authorization part that i will be authentication part I, that i will be covering in a while okay so the first half is done url we have mentioned method is post in the body i have mentioned this i will be putting it here so last updated after i want to filter out the results after 16th november but before 20th december okay so this is last updated after and last updated before parameters followed by that filters in my filters i'm using pipeline name as the operand and then in as the operator and under values as i mentioned in right i can mention more than one value in the values array so i am mentioning pipeline 1 and pipeline 2 that means that i have to filter out all the execution details of pipeline 1 as well as pipeline 2 after 16th november before 20th december so this is what i am aiming at and after doing all this we will be asked to provide authentication okay so coming here i am using user assigned managed identity so there are various options available here uh, it doesn't work with none because we need to authenticate ourselves before we uh, hit the rest api right we need to prove ourselves if we have to have proper credentials right so none doesn't work basic i have been tried and i'm not sure if it will work and apart from that we have two main um, ways of authenticating ourselves one is system assigned managed identity user assigned managed identity okay so how i did it um, the logic behind it let us cover in maybe another video but whatever i did for this uh, particular video i'll be taking you through that okay go to azure portal and uh, why do we need to do this just for authenticating ourselves see whenever we are trying to access a database what we will be doing we will be proving ourselves by either providing sql server authentication details like the username and password 
or based on windows authentication we will prove ourselves right so we need to prove our identity or we need to have the appropriate credentials in order to access the sql server database just like that if we have to hit the rest api and get the details of my azure data factory pipeline i need to authenticate myself so for that we need to prove our identity so for that what we have to do go to manage identities there are two identities as i already said user assign as well as system assign for this video let us go to manage identities and create user assign managed identity so once i come here i'll be having an option to create a managed identity and once i do that i can attach this managed identity with my azure data factory okay once i couple my data factory and managed identity i can use this identity for connecting or interacting with my data factory henceforth okay so how to create it is a very simple process you just have to say the subscription name and the resource group and then the region and name once you do this you will be having a user assigned managed identity created just like how you are seeing here okay so you need not have to worry about how it work internally but just that you are creating a credential or you are creating an identity in azure portal irrespective of any resource right now okay once you do this you will the second step this is step one second step is to go to the data factory and then click on the data factory name and then go to managed identities here you have to go to user assign managed identity and add the identity that you right created just now okay it, it will again be simple you will be choosing the subscription and then you have to filter the identity name that you have created right now once you do this your data factory is associated with the user assigned managed identity and you can make use of that identity to prove yourself okay so this is uh, what we have to keep in mind so coming back i already created a user assigned managed identity and then i associated it with my data factory as well so uh i am clicking user assigned managed identity here and resource this is the endpoint that is going to provide us the management details management details in the sense uh, the run details or the metadata okay uh, if you have to get any other details like the graph based details there are di different endpoints here that you can look uh, by clicking the i icon okay and then credentials so this credential is nothing but um, uh, it is the credential pointing to the managed identity that we created so if you do not have anything you will be clicking new and uh, you will be choosing user assigned managed identity and then the subscription name followed by that user assigned managed identity that you have already created so once you do that we will be having a credential to choose from here and uh, that's it we are done with the setup okay web activity is all uh, ready to be run so i am clicking debug and it will it is going to fetch me the execution details of my pipeline 1 and 2 after 16th november before 20th december okay so pipeline has succeeded now if you look at the values we can understand more about how this api works right so it starts with an id followed by that we have a run id we have a group run id pipeline name is pipeline 1 and the parameters if i have passed anything okay so uh, for uh, for pipeline 1 there is a parameter called trigger file name and uh, this is the expression that is used there and then invoked by uh, actually it is it can be the pipeline can be invoked either manually or through trigger right so this execution uh, is triggered by a trigger called trigger 2 okay and then the trigger id like that if you come down and see uh, you are seeing the invoked by as manual so this particular run is triggered by a trigger called trigger 2 and this execution is triggered by manual uh, trigger or manual debug okay so this is how we can understand um or this this is how we can capture the details of executions of any pipeline um, actually one pipeline or more than one pipeline using in okay so as you can see here since i am using in i have used more than one pipeline you can use not equals as well or not in as well so these are the allowed list of parameters and values that you can use while calling the rest api endpoint okay so that's all i have for this video if you have any questions uh, you can let me know otherwise thanks a lot for watching keep supporting